Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's episode 158 of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. Today, we're going to talk about resistance training. Some people call it weight training, physical conditioning. There's a lot of ways you can call it, but really what we're talking about, why and how to make you stronger and how that's going to translate into making you a better martial artist. My name is Jeremy Lesniak, and I'm the founder at Whistlekick, and we make the world's best sparring gear. You should check out the sparring gear we offer all the other great stuff we've got at whistlekick.com. You should check out the other 157. Yeah, can't believe we've been going this long. This is awesome. Such a ride. 157 episodes at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. We've got all kinds of great stuff over there. Everything from re- movie reviews, uh, it, like the time we dug into the Karate Kid, the original one, and dug out all kinds of crazy trivia, stuff that you've probably never heard of before, to interviews with martial artists from the biggest names to those who are making a huge difference locally to just all kinds of great people. I love every episode of this show. I love everybody that I've gotten to talk to from this show. And really, it's just an honor to be here talking and knowing that somebody out there like you is listening. If you haven't left us a review over on iTunes, I'm going to ask that you do that. That helps new people find the show, which keeps this all going, helps us get more guests coming on. We've got a lot of cool stuff coming for you in the future. We keep trying to raise the bar, trying to grow the martial arts community, giving back resources and tools that can help you as a student, as an instructor, as a school owner, you know, just whatever we see that we might be able to do to help grow this thing that we love here at Whistlekick, this thing called martial arts. Now I could talk about Whistlekick all day, but that's not why you're here. You're here to hear about the subject matter for today's show, resistance training. What is resistance training? Resistance training is physical activity exercise that uses some kind of resistance, be it gravity or weight, which if you really want to be a nerd about it, it's just gravity, or the tension from a bands or something like that to improve muscular strength and endurance. But why does that matter for the martial arts? Resistance training can improve your strength, your endurance, your power. It can increase or at the very least, it supports flexibility in your joints, in your muscles. It can improve your balance, help you build better body awareness and improve your body control. Now, those are all things that we strive for as martial artists. Every one of them is something that we work towards because it makes us better, whether it's helping us execute our kicks better or our punches or deeper stances, stronger stances, whatever it is, resistance training is going to help support those missions. Now, resistance training shows up a lot in the martial arts, but not as martial art movement terribly often, right? The best example of resistance training that shows up in martial arts is push-ups, right? We do a lot of push-ups as martial artists because it's a great movement, but a push-up is not really a martial arts movement. But there is one place that I've always been fascinated at its incorporation into the martial arts. And I did a little bit of research for this show. I didn't dig too deep because the show notes were getting long as it was. And I try to keep these Thursday episodes to, you know, 15 minutes or less, you know, somewhere around there. I think one time we broke 20 minutes for a topic show. And just looking at the clock right now, we might go past that today. Anyway, I don't want to keep Gavin too much. So... I find it fascinating. If you've ever seen the karate kata San Chin, which actually does have some Chinese roots, like I said, I did some research, and it actually shows up in a lot of different martial arts styles. San Chin, for those of you that are unfamiliar with the form, is a a form, aka kata pattern tool, right? That you do with incredible tension. And it's done very slowly, not for the sake of being slow, but because you're fighting against yourself. And that's an example of using internal resistance. It's still resistance training, but it's internal resistance to help build the body. And in fact, some martial arts styles, the Sanchin Kata is kind of the foundation for the entire style. That's a whole different conversation. But by the end of today's show, you might have an idea why some people would choose to make that so foundational. So I gave you some examples of ways that resistance training can make you better as a martial artist, but really they all come down to building strength. Your endurance is better because you're stronger, so it doesn't take as much effort 
to execute a movement. So you can do more movements without taxing your cardiovascular system as much, right? So it's really, it's strength. You're building strength at the heart of it. Everything is better when you're stronger. I can't think of a single thing that becomes more difficult when you're stronger. Now you might say, well, if you get really strong, then you might be bigger. And sometimes when you're bigger, some things are harder to do, like combing your hair. And we're actually going to talk about that later on. But no, that's, that's not because you're stronger. That's because your muscles have grown and you're inflexible. And there's something that I heard somebody say, and, and I wish I remember where I got it from. I don't even know if it was original to them, but I love this quote, stronger people are harder to kill. And what's more martial arts, what's being a better martial artist than being harder to kill? So you get stronger, you're a better martial artist automatically, at least I think so. There's a lot of different ways you can train from a resistance perspective. You know, you can do squats and push-ups and pull-ups, and deadlifts, lunges, gymnastic ring movements. There's a lot of great stuff out there. I'm a, personally a big fan of what some people call compound movements. And the easiest way to think about that is the opposite. The opposite of a compound movement is a single joint movement. So the the quintessential one that you see bodybuilders do or a lot of people do, and honestly, I did some today because there are plenty of great reasons to do them, but a bicep curl, that's a single joint movement. My elbow bends. A compound movement is something like a push-up, where your entire body is engaged. Maybe not your entire body necessarily, but a lot of your body. It's working more than just one spot. Those compound movements have a lot of translation over to the martial arts. And I feel that if you focus on those movements versus your single joint exercises, you're going to see the most benefit, the most bang for your buck for your time. If you are doing single joint movements, just make sure that you're training opposing muscles. You know, if you do bicep curls, you got to do something for your triceps. So your arms are balanced out. And it's not just so they look right. It's because imbalances can actually start to pull your joints out of whack and things start tracking funny and you become injury prone and then you become hurt and then you can't train and then you become sad. And really, I don't want you to become sad. I don't want the result of this podcast being that you go out and do something that makes you sad, especially if it means you stop training. Gymnastics and body weight movements can be really great at building connective tissue, which is why you see gymnasts, young gymnasts doing so much conditioning, you know, so many pull-ups because it strengthens the ligaments because at full rotational speed, if you watch a gymnast on the bars, the force exerted on their joints is enormous. And by extension, as martial artists, when we're throwing a punch or even more so, let's say a spinning back fist, you ever done a spinning back fist truly fast? You can feel the separation in your joints. Things start to pull. So conditioning those ligaments can really help with that. If you haven't done a spinning back fist, maybe you've done a spinning hook kick or something, and you felt that stretch. And I don't mean a stretch in the muscles. I mean a stretch in the ligaments and the joints. It can be a little unnerving if you're not sure what's going on. Well, resistance training helps keep you from separating things. And again, missing training and becoming sad. One of the questions that comes up a lot when I talk to people about this type of training is how often should I do it? And it's a pretty simple answer. You want to do it as much as you can handle, as much as you have time for, but in a way that doesn't hinder your martial arts training or other aspects of your life. Now, for you, that could be one day a week. Hey, if you're not doing anything now, one day a week of something is better than nothing. It's going to help move you forward. If you have the opportunity to train, let's say, five or 10 minutes a day, do some push-ups and some squats and some things like that for 10 minutes, seven days a week, hey, if that doesn't leave you sore and banged up, awesome, do that. I'm a firm believer that you identify a, an amount of work that elicits a response from the body in adaptation, trying to make your body respond, not necessarily physically grow, but grow in terms of making you stronger, but not so responsive that it needs to get sore. Becoming really sore is your body saying, hey, that was a lot. I need some time to rest. And pushing through can cause some injuries and everything. So you're trying to find that sweet spot between doing work that helps, but not too much. 
Here's another way to look at it. You want to do as little as possible to get your body to respond. The more often you do that minimal work, the more efficient you're going to be, the stronger you're going to be. And with the less time, with the less time, the least time. There we go. Sometimes I can't speak. Let me illustrate that with an example. This is something that I advocate in martial arts classes, gymnastics classes, pretty much anywhere I am. This is the format that I'm giving people for this concept. Let's take push-ups, for example. Let's say you can do 10 great push-ups in one set. You can't do 11. You can do 10. Maybe twice a day, do four. If you can do 10, you can probably do four without getting too sore. If you can't, well, do three. You keep doing that every day, and then eventually three becomes easy. So then you go to four. You're trying to ride that line where it works, where it's not simple, but it's not difficult. Hopefully it's clear at this point. All right, getting bulky. I mentioned that earlier, told you I'd talk about it. It's primarily a myth. It is really hard to get big. When I talk to people about resistance training, one of the things that they'll throw back is, well, I, I don't want to, I don't want to get bulky. I don't like the look of bodybuilders. Two things to think about. First is the people that you see like that, that didn't just happen overnight. That didn't just happen in a year. That took years of dedicated training, tons of hours. It's not going to happen to you overnight. Now, let's say you have some incredible genetics and you start doing some resistance training and your body starts to respond unlike 99% of the population and you don't like what's starting to happen. Well, then you slow down. It's going to be okay. You're not going to turn into some muscled freak that can't fit into their uniform. I promise. Now, there are two real places you can train. You can train at home or you can train at a gym. Now, in a gym, you've got access to more equipment it really is a better environment for most of us, not everyone, but for most people, they're going to respond better to training in that environment because you have more options. I'm going to suggest that you build your workouts around dumbbells and barbells and kettlebells. Now, if you're new, if you don't know how to work with this equipment, hiring a trainer for a couple sessions to understand what you want to do and to know how to do the movements properly so you don't get hurt, so you can get the maximum benefit that's worth the time. It's worth the money if you value it as it's going to translate to your martial arts. If you don't value it in that way, that's okay. You can consider some of the home stuff I'm going to talk about in a second, or maybe you want to attend a class, you know, a CrossFit class, a boot camp class. There are lots of options for class formats that incorporate a lot of resistance training. And if you're used to a martial arts class, you might find that format a little more enjoyable too. Personally, I do. I may have glossed over a point the reason I prefer dumbbells, barbells, and kettlebells in a gym setting versus machine-based exercises is because they're designed for those compound movements versus the single joint movement. If I sit down at a, um, I don't know, a, a rowing machine, it's stabilizing my body. It's doing a lot of things that just don't really translate the same way as a martial artist. If you punch in class, you don't have something bracing you to help support that force to make sure it goes in the right place. And machines tend to do that. I mean, that's, it's kind of a whole rabbit hole. And there's certainly a counterpoint here. But I'm going to say my opinion, you're better off with the dynamic compound movements. Now let's talk about at home equipment. At home, you can do this really simply, really inexpensively. And I'll tell you the equipment that I'm using right now and stuff you may want to consider. The number one thing that I use at home is a pair of dumbbells. And usually I'm just using one. There's all kinds of things that I can do with a single dumbbell. Some of them are single joint movements. Some of them are compound movements. There's a lot that you can do with those. The second thing I'm using is a balance board. Balance board is so much fun to practice squatting on it or doing push-ups on it. And if you're not familiar with a balance board, imagine a circle, a wooden disc that sits on some type of a ball. And at no point are all of the edges able to touch. So you're trying to keep this thing flat while it's sitting on a ball. It can be really hard. I'm trying to work up to 
standing on the balance board and kicking, but you got to go really slow. And so trying to balance while you're going really slow, it's a lot of fun. It's a great challenge. Something I can do in my living room and it's making me stronger. I've also got a couple kettlebells that I use, some resistance bands, think big rubber bands, you know, and you can get all this stuff for under a hundred bucks together. I mean, if you, if you had like $75 to spend, I'd say get like a, maybe a 20 pound kettlebell and a balance board, a set of bands. And there's all kinds of stuff you can do. And there's an infinite amount of information on the internet on how to use this stuff so much that for me to do more is just silly because there are people out there that specialize on how to use this stuff. You're going to find it really quickly with Google and yeah, just go do a little bit of research if that's what you want to do. Now, if 75 bucks is too much, just get yourself a 20 pound kettlebell and hit the web, find some movements that you want to do kettlebell swings and just, just there's so much stuff out there you can do. And again, at home, simply, quickly, and effectively. Now for the instructors listening, there's a lot of ways that you can incorporate resistance training into classes. And this is a place that I would love to see the martial arts industry improve is bringing this stuff in. Because not only are stronger people harder to kill, but they're healthier. They have fewer injuries. There's no bad reason to do this stuff. It's no bad reason. There's no reason why you shouldn't do this stuff. Man, I am I am struggling to talk today. I apologize. So as I was writing out this section, it just got super big. So what I did is I broke it out into a blog post over at whistlekick.com. So you can hit the show notes for this episode 158, and there will be a link over to it, or you can just go to whistlekick.com and check it out. It was posted on, what's today? February 1st of 2017, and it's our top 10 bodyweight movements for a martial arts class. We wrote it thinking of instructors, but it's good for everybody. There's some cautions in there. There's some suggestions on how to implement these movements, how to mix them up. And we even threw in videos on some of the more complicated or uh, some of the movements that people might not be as familiar with. And they're not videos that we did. They're videos that other people did that illustrate the points that I would want to make. So check that out whistlekick.com or hit the show notes whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. It's important to keep this kind of training very. You don't want to fall into a trap of doing the same thing over and over again because your body's going to respond. What does the body do? A body is really good at adapting and it's going to want to be efficient. So if you do the same things over and over again, your body's going to get used to that and you're not going to get as much of a response. So you got to change it up. I suggest, you know, picking a few things, getting good at them, you know, don't do them in the same order. Don't do the same number of them. You know, just cycle them through in different ways. You know, do five of each three times. And maybe the next time you do 10 of each two times. You know, just keep it going. And when you really feel like you've got a good grasp on how to do those movements, then add more. And an interesting way to look at that is, you know, that's kind of how we approach progress within the martial arts. We give our white belts or our novice ranks, if, if you're in a system that doesn't use that kind of belt system, we give those new attendees a small set of movements. Sometimes it's just two or three things. Work on those. Get comfortable with those. Now here's another one. Now here's another one. Now here's another one. And as you add them, you get the ability to mix them up in different ways and these different combinations lead to different things. Well, your resistance training can be just like that. Let's talk about range of motion. When you're doing resistance training, there are people that will suggest that you not use a full range of motion. When we talk about how this translates into martial arts, you've got to do it. You've got to do full range of motion because all of our movements as martial artists require a variety of ranges. You don't keep your hands out in front of you in guard and punch from there all the time, every time. Sometimes your hands have to come back. Sometimes you throw a short kick. Sometimes you throw a long kick. Sometimes you kick high. Sometimes you kick low. There's a lot of variety. And as a martial artist, part of our job is to be flexible. And I don't mean flexible in terms of being able to put your foot behind your head. I mean, diverse, your ability to do different things at different times and adapt to the scenarios in front of you, whether it's self-defense or it's sparring in the gym or whatever it is. 
You're a better martial artist when you're more versatile. So the place that I don't see full range of motion in a martial arts class is with push-ups. And I just want to hit on this. I think I've probably talked about it once or twice. It's a pet peeve of mine. Push-ups should be done so you touch the ground. Now, why is that important? Some people could say, well, you know, you're getting most of the benefit from, you know, going down most of the way and, and where's the benefit here? Well, how about this? In most martial arts systems, the retracted hand on a punch is placed somewhere on the body, whether that's on the hip or above the hip or, you know, behind the hip. I've seen it in a lot of different places, but it's generally taught that that punch has to come all the way back to the body. Well, that's the same position that you're going to be in if you go all the way to the floor on a push-up. When you throw a punch, you have a limited amount of time to generate as much power as possible. The faster and stronger you can come off your body throwing that punch, the more power you're going to have at the execution point of that punch. AKA, when you train full range of motion push-ups, you build a much stronger punch than if you're only doing half a push-up. Try it out. If you haven't been doing your push-ups this way, you'll probably find them really challenging. Get through that. Let your body adapt to that. And you're going to be a better puncher. As you're training, you want to be training, thinking about three different things. You're training for power. You're training for speed. And you're training for strength. Power is the thing that we think of the most as martial artists. We're trying to generate powerful movements. Because power is a factor of strength and speed. When we think of top-end strength, doing something that is as strong as possible, it's slow. When we think about doing something as quickly as possible, it's weak, relatively. Power falls in between, and maximum power is the ability to move a reasonable load reasonably quickly, right? And this is where most of us are when we throw a technique. We're not throwing it as fast as we can we're throwing it a little bit less than that most of the time because we're putting power behind it. Or sorry, we're putting strength behind it. We're generating power. You want to train all three. Speed training is going to help your body learn how to move faster. And yes, your body can learn how to move faster. You've got to push yourself on that speed piece. If you think about a track athlete, when they go to the track, if they're trying to get a better 400 meter time, they're not running 400 meters every time they run. Sometimes they might run a very short distance. They're trying to go as fast as they can over that shorter distance. As the body becomes used to that, that speed at 25 meters, 50 meters, 100 meters starts to stretch out. Their overall time comes down. The same thing can happen with your techniques. You can train them in parts. You can train other things for speed. Man, I think I just found another rabbit hole. Maybe we have to do an episode on speed training. If you want that, let me know. Drop me an email, jeremy at whistlekick.com or comment on the show notes here if you want something like that. Strength training, just pure strength training, we kind of, we've talked about that today, right? I mean, that's primarily what resistance training is. The focus is on strength for the most part. But power training, say like hitting a heavy bag as hard as you can, as fast as you can, imagine that you're putting your hand through somebody else's body, that's training yourself for striking in a real life situation. If you get into a confrontation, if someone's threatening your life, you don't want to punch them as fast as you can. You don't want to punch them as strong as you can. You want to punch them as powerfully as you can, because that's what's going to knock them down, knock them out, get them off of you, whatever it is. It's power. Easiest way, I think, to think about speed versus strength versus power, let's consider a push-up again. It's a great example, right? Everybody knows how to do a push-up. You can do push-ups as fast as you can. That's speed. You can do push-ups with somebody sitting on your back. That's strength. Or you can do push-ups that are so hard and so fast that your body comes up off the ground. That's power. That's what we're looking for. Martial artists tend to do really well with resistance training because in the martial arts, we develop a lot of body awareness. We're connected to our body. We know where our hands are. We know where our feet are. We know where the points in between are. And someone that has a even a moderate amount of martial arts training tends to adapt to resistance training very quickly. 
And I think that that's great. People that aren't martial artists, when I work with them, they don't always have the ability to to know what's going on. They they seem lost in their own bodies. And we see that with new martial arts students too. And that's okay. It's something that that we tend to work through. But I really like seeing the connection between the body awareness in a martial artist and their comprehension of what resistance training movements can do. There we go. I'm looking at my clock here and it looks like we're going to get close to 30 minutes on today's episode. So that's kind of a record uh, made a little more surprising for myself in that I went off bullet points today. I, I haven't been writing transcripts before the episodes. And honestly, I've gotten positive feedback on that. So if you guys missed the transcripts, let me know. Um, but otherwise, I'm just going to keep doing it this way because it's a little bit easier for me to put together. And I enjoy the challenge. Hit the show notes, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com to see other episodes because there's no transcript today. Uh, there's no pictures today. But what there is, is a link to the blog post I mentioned, the top 10 resistance training exercises that you can incorporate in a martial arts class along with the videos. That's over at whistlekick.com. There's a direct link from the episode show notes today, 158. You can find us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Pinterest, Instagram. The username's Whistlekick everywhere. You can shoot us some feedback, info at whistlekick.com, or if you want to get to me directly, it's jeremy at whistlekick.com. If you have somebody that you want to see on the show, head over to the website, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com and fill out the form there. Or, you know, you can email us. Pretty much, just get a hold of us. We're easy. We're here. We want to hear from you, right? I've been gabbing a lot today. Thanks for listening. I appreciate your time. Until next episode, train hard, smile, have a great day.